here's a special little thing that I thought I'd record for the patrons here. This is me trying out some new paints. So you've got those reference pictures in the corner. You're looking at this guy right here. This is from Mirrors Miniatures, I'm pretty sure. Got this big old dude here. That's what we're working on right now. And what we're doing is we're testing out glazes. So you know how I like to use the liner paints, especially at these early stages? So that's what I've been doing here is testing out these guys right here. And we got a few jars. So we have light umber here. We have a tan flesh here. And what's this? This is my mahogany. So the names I'm not going to be real familiar on because I just got these today. And we're trying them out. Just thought this could be a fun thing for you to see. Um, also, we've got this one out on the palette, golden brown. So we'll just keep these things out here so you guys can see that. We'll throw other ones out. I think there's about 36 colors all together. There's blues, all kinds of fun stuff. What do we got here? This is a bright warm gray. So we'll throw that out there. Now, just a quick thing. These work a little bit differently. So think almost like a jar of Elmer's glue. This is how the paint comes out. It's not you twist this off and then you have to squeeze it out because I talked for months and actually a year and a half I think this has been underway and I told them look at the bottles are like this. I don't want to see that because I don't know how many times you've seen them on the videos. These jam or this piece ends up in here. And we looked at dozens and dozens of different bottle types, and this one seemed to do the trick. So let's see. I'm going to throw out this is a little more mahogany. Comes out like so. Now, the bottles, they may change this because this is a first run. The bottles themselves, you have to really push on them to get the paint out. But I like that. I'm kind of used to it from the Badger Steiner res and other things. So, again, I'm used to that. Um, you guys may be a little different, but see, it's no problem. No problem to get the paint out there. It also tends to stay wet on your palette a lot longer. And this was all done with the glaze. You can see there's still water in here. It's the nifty thing about these colors is that they stay wet for longer. So let's switch around here. This is just over Badger Stino Res Primer right here. I'm going to show you the, this is that light tan color. I thought it would be a relatively neutral thing and I wanted it to be lighter. So what I'll do is go back into what I was doing. So here's, I think it's coal black it's called, and here's some mahogany. And there's really nothing terribly different about what I'm doing here. It's more just the paints that I'm using. So I'm going to find myself a leg to hang on to here. And now I've got the camera set for other stuff for later today, so it's not the ideal recording circumstances, and this won't be a super long video here. This is just a special treat for you guys, so you can see it first before everybody else does. And you can see I'm doing the same thing that I did on this side. It's some of the mahogany, some of the black. We're alternating a little bit back and forth here. Like so. And so I can even throw a little bit of the golden brown in there. That changes it. Almost sort of graze it down a touch. And I just wanted you to see the reference pictures in the corner. So you knew what I was after. Thought I made a blog post on that figure. Clearly I haven't because I couldn't find the darn thing anywhere. Alright. This is the other thing I was curious about. Was these Mears miniatures. You can see how deep these crevices are. Now oils and their capillary action will get you down in there no problem whatsoever but I've found with a lot of the water-based paints getting down in those crevices is a difficult challenge to say the least and it seems like 
And look at how that, and this is at, I want to say almost 70 some odd percent water here. And it's really covering well. So again, I'm gonna, it's going to be tough for me. I don't recognize the jars or the names. So I'm pretty much just reaching blind, just grabbing whatever I can find here. And you know me, I'm going to still stick with compressed pallets. Yeah, I should call them that instead of limited pallets or whatever. But this was a different red. Let me see if I can find what that one might have been. That one might have been deep red, burnt red. That's what that one's called. I was even messing around with some of the there's a, some additional Lannister figures that I had, and I played around with those with these paints to see, well, could I do the same Sky Earth effect? Could I match some of the leathers? Could I match the red? Now, I think I've told you a number of times in the past, one of the reasons why I don't use a bazillion different colors on miniatures is when it comes time to match things, it's a whole lot easier to match something that started out as three to eight colors for the entire miniature versus something where I use 20 different colors on the same figure. So here I'm going to impart a little bit of that, what's that called again, light umber. Just a little bit of that and you can see I'm working my way down. It's We're letting gravity do as much as possible for us here. And again, I don't think, let's see, I'm trying to think of if I've done large creature videos in acrylics lately, and I don't think I have. I think and it, the last several large creatures have either been in oils or maybe trying out some specialty things like the big old weir shark and the pearl white. That's the thing we experimented with. Now I was just on the line with Peter from Creature Caster, and apparently they are also working on a metal medium. And you know how much I enjoy the Vallejo metal medium, so that'll be interesting to see. And I had to, had to tell him that, well, you know, I don't really use a lot of metallic paints, like, ever at all. All right, let's get... Now, see, so we're trans, transitioning into a little bit of just furless areas here. And we're going to get more into... See, this is a somewhat more opaque here. Looks like you can still see that. So it's less transparent. This has this particular paint has a touch of white in it. Obviously, that's that flesh tone here. But you can tell I'm letting the paint that was in the wash carry on down into this. So it's it's giving me a little extra level of blending. So it's going to be tough to keep all of this on screen. I definitely was not ready for a large creature type thing to be in a video at all. So you just have to bear with me on that. But what I notice is the paints, they don't bubble up or beat up or anything like that. They, they are like the clear and liner paints that we all love so much. They don't uh, yeah, they don't break down in when you really water the snot out of them and you know I do that. So again just this is the same kind of shaded base coat that you're used to. Now of course on large creatures like this especially ones that are you know, there's just an awful lot of browns and tans. This is pretty much how I go about tackling those. So, again, this is not going to be really, really, really long. I just wanted you to see a live testing of these. 
because there's a bazillion, maybe two bazillion paints that have been released just in the last week. It's been driving me kind of nuts because I keep wondering, well, you know, I have the paints that I like, the paints that I use all the time, and why would I, I don't even know if replace them is the right word, but why would I want to move on to something else or whatever, you know, these in some of my other tests, I've mixed together these paints with the liners and the clears very successfully. I think it's maybe because there's a similarity in that, that formulation that's, that's rugged, that can withstand a lot of thinning. These colors, now the difference is a lot of these colors are more muted. You've seen the, the clears and the liners. You know how, especially the clears, how intense those colors are. These are a little different. These are in some ways kind of the opposite. So here we're going to just see that. Now try and actually gray this down a touch here. All right. So we got some wet paint here. I just threw a little bit of that black in it. And what are we going to do? We're going to do this. A little bit of this here. And see how we're blending that in. I know that's going to be tough for you to see. I'm also running out of places to hang on to here. There we go. Now the face. We're going to mess around with that a bit here. Another reddish color. Is that on screen and look at this how that stayed that stayed actually wet wow it's really stayed wet and as you know it's it's winter here winter's coming and it's been cold it's been in the 20s 30s whatever that means the heater's been going and that's when paint tends to want to dry much sooner but see how that just how oh, it just creates its own transition, right? Oops, sorry. Its own transition right here. Look at that. And I've noticed that they do that and they don't leave the watermarks that we all dread. See, I did that on this side. So here, the paint's actually, that's dried because I did that a while ago. I want to say about an hour or so ago. That's, uh, take advantage of that now and, and I'm just taking a few colors and what do we got so I'm gonna look at the other face see that one in the lower left hand corner and I'm going to just so this is the same colors we had on the palette but now just starting to pick out a few lighter areas here so I'm actually gonna yeah I'll keep going with that I could do this lower lip here you notice that the fur around it is very it's very dark so I'm gonna keep that dark but boy this is yeah and you see this covers really well too yeah let's get this there This brush is a little frayed. And I'll just do a few things and see how that's kind of blending itself in there. And we can then come back and tone that down. And let's get that upper lip there. So you can see the difference now between that side and this side. So again, apologize that this wanders off camera. It is everything is set for a whole different, very different subject matter for the next video that I'm filming. Again, just wanted to maybe give you guys a little special treat here. 
I think the eye is where you can see it. Hopefully it's in reasonable focus. And hitting the teeth here. So you can see how that likes to stay wet for a while. Well, let's... If it's going to stay wet, let's do a little blending there. Mess around with that. Yeah, so... You can definitely wet blend these together. Yep, that is doing what I would hope it would do. Here and some of these muscles. So yeah, that's it's all working out pretty well and I'm definitely enjoying how the paint stay wetter on the palette. So I'm going to go back to my other original brush here and try and finish off the rest of the legs. And what's the other thing that I noticed? also noticed that it takes a little less paint to cover areas. In some ways it's almost like oil paint where a little bit seems to go longer. And that's a good thing. You know, using less paint, especially on some big guy like this, is always a plus. Because I know there'd be times where I'd be going in for... You know, back into the liner paints for a second, third, fourth time, whatever, thinking, man, oh man, I, I might have to, to put up more paint again already. So this is, it's hardy stuff. It's definitely, yeah, I can, they can cover pretty well, but all, not all things that cover well are necessarily okay, save for doing the kind of glazing that we like to do. I've just, it's a hard lesson I've found out in the past. The paints seem to be really consistent out of the jar. And by that, you don't have one that seems like it's practically liquid, and then the next one seems to be like sludge. Now, every paint can be different, and, and that's in the same line, just because of what's had to go in them pigment-wise and such, but these seem to be reasonably consistent in that way. So yeah, I'm just, again, this is all essentially shaded base coat that you're watching here. Fun little thing. I think I may have one more of these Rhinoxes, I think that's what I've been calling them, Rhinoxes. Might have one more of these. And if I do, maybe I'll turn it into just a full-scale regular video so you can see it. And I'm going to go a little darker on the ends. Of the, for whatever reason, I usually make the ends of the horns darker. I don't know why. It's just something that I do. I was also able to do, you know, the removing paint thing that you see me do all the time. So yeah, this doesn't really look all that different than if I was using the same old traditional paint. Oh, let's see, there's another red out here. So there's, well, there's it's a nifty purple, but I'm looking for a so I'm going to get this, uh, is this burnt red again? Yeah, burnt red again. Throw that out there. I just need to get down into the mouth here. Need to get some deep red. So I'm just mixing that black with the red. There's some nifty dark blues also. So yeah, I'm just shoving that down into the reds. Down into his mouth, sorry. 
and go back to this one. You notice I haven't really used any light colors yet. Always by design, just like you've seen me do many, many times. Because if you get too, you get into the lighter colors too quickly, you've heard me see how that you just don't get that same context at all. So with this side being dry, this is that golden brown. Yeah, and it wipes away really nice. So that's good. I can do this. Wipe some of it away. So finger painting. Check. I mean, hey, if I can't finger paint with the paint, it's not paint. No way I'd be using that if I couldn't finger paint with it. Not sure that's something that most paint company or miniature companies or whatever would want to hear, but that's just how it is. And I'm sure I can use the sponges down in some of these areas, too. So, yeah, this is definitely... It's passing all the tests. Like I said, I was... Not long ago, maybe an hour and a half ago, I was doing Sky Earth Non-Metallics with it. So I'm going to try and paint a bunch of other things with this. You know, maybe some, I got some Reaper miniatures, rats, like dire rats or whatever those are. See, so yeah, I'm just going to let some of the black get in here. So I can go multiple ways with this, which that makes me really happy that I can do that. And again, it all covers the primer really well. So now I just needed to get some dark in here. At least gauging by my reference pictures. As these guys are supposed to be reasonably similar to each other. Oh yeah, now that's uh, interesting. Little course. I, I'm taking the golden brown and the black to make a little bit of a greenish gray and that is that's uh, really nice in the shadows there so essentially just on the fly I was making the I think it's dark wood is the secret weapon color that I just created there Yeah, let's, uh, okay, try a little, make a grayish pink color here. So I'm basically taking that flesh tone, some of that burnt red, getting that hair off the brush. And we'll go in here. Don't want to make that too bright. At least looking at my references, that was not... And we don't want to give them lip gloss or something like that. Makes them look a little less threatening, I would suppose. All right. Now, like I said, we haven't got anywhere near some of the lighter colors. There's an ivory type color. Well, obviously for, well, things like teeth and tusks or whatever. And what the heck, let's, oh, actually I'm going to try some of this. So this is a bright, warm gray. It's a bit of a greenish gray. Here, we'll throw it out on the palette there. I've got a few other, it's a little bit like, uh, let's see. I have one, I think it's a Vallejo type color that looks a little bit like that too. I think that's not the one. It's a little bit like this one here. A little like that. So we're going to mix some of that in with our golden yellow. All right. And you can see that covers really well. 
No problem there. Same thing here. I guess my other question was when I do that feathered type brush stroke that I do, will it essentially be that semi translucent color? And that's something I still have to figure out yet. You know, we're only in the. <laughs> haven't even been testing these for more than two, three hours yet, so. There's really a bunch more to try. But we're getting some nifty results here. So I say I got this transition of the dark to light back to dark. We'll do some shading on that stuff too. But I would rather that be... I want to say done more with color rather than just a straight light or dark. So obviously the horns are a little bit different on these guys. So yeah, I can paint with the side of the brush here. That's good. Yeah, I can still tap away here and not have this the paint disappear. So that's also also handy. That's fine. It's it's really nice that this stuff does remain workable for so long. Yeah, that so I can do the feathered. All right, this was the next thing. Was can I do some of this? I'm just actually literally stealing paint off of one part of the miniature here and putting it somewhere else. That is what I was hoping for because now it sort of matches that transition a bit. Letting this get a little grayed down. Because what I was most concerned about is that I'd have to almost, I don't know, come up with a whole different approach. And if I use these in videos, then it would be really confusing for you guys. Because you've seen lots of videos and how I work. And if all of a sudden that was to dramatically change... It would be confusing. Now, I definitely paint differently now than I did four or five years ago when some of the Painting Pyramid videos were made. Well, that was inevitable because, well, the projects change, but the paints change too, as in some of them go away. I think you see a lot of GW paint, well, not a lot, but some GW paints in the old painting pyramid videos and you won't see any now now you might see some GW products because we do have the local game store now so it is possible for us to actually get GW stuff in person it's not really something that I would order online so again, here's that. This is a nifty little flesh tone right here. I'm going to see what that looks like next to my skin. Yeah, it's not too shabby. So that was just the... Okay, that was your tan flesh here with the bright warm gray and some of the junk that's in the brush. And that's basically how I make my skin tones. I think you've seen me do that before, too. Just take whatever gunk is in the brush. Some form of reddish color. An ochre, whatever. And then make my own flesh tone. So, yeah, that that's covering over wet color pretty nice. Let's see if I can get the eye in here. That seems to work pretty well. Now let's see if we can get in here with... I'm going to find myself... Ah, this is what I'm missing. So this is that light umber. It's basically... Hmm, not quite a yellow ochre. It's a little, a little more tan. 
than that. That's what we need. I need a little bit of flesh tone there. And like so. And let's see if we can wipe this away. It looks like it. Yeah, that's working pretty nice. And same thing here. You can see what I'm going to tapping away at that to remove some paint. Continuing on here. On the face a bit. Let's get over to the other side here. I'm going to do the same thing. Sorry if I hit the camera, but that's just bound to happen. Because again, it is not set up for big stuff like this. Not by any means. And do the same thing there. Now this guy, he is not as, the other one's much more of a reddish tone. It has to do obviously with, I was using some of the secret weapon rust colors. But don't necessarily want every one of these guys to be exactly alike. However, maybe, you know, we say we want this to be a little more towards the red. Now there's also, le oh, that's another reason too, there's just less fur showing. So let us, so we'll take some of the orange here. Now again, these are sealed, so you're going to have to take this seal off. And there is, can you hear that? That's a glass agitator in there. And let's just throw that orange out over here. And where's that, what is this, mahogany? I'm going to throw a little bit of that out. Now you have to actually open these up enough to get, get your paint out there. Because this is something I haven't tried yet. So it looks like that is on the palette camera. And I'm making basically a rusty colored glaze. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Yep, that's where it needs to be. So let's even thin that down a bit more. And we're just going to go over this, blend it up into here, and I just got a new supply of these, and oh look at that, we can wipe some of it away. So see how we've kind of changed the tone of that there compared to this leg, see how gray that is, and we've just made that, we've shifted that over. I don't really think I've shown that too often in previous videos. Yeah, so we'll do the same thing here. We've got that same glaze, like so. You can even take a different kind of sponge. So this is, <laughs> I suppose in some ways, this is the more traditional way of glazing, where you're just sort of tinting stuff. So see, we've got that now definitely more towards that orangey red. Now let's throw a bit down in here too. So that's another, it's another tick mark that we can put on these. They obviously can glaze pretty well too. And I'm not gonna go all the way through on this thing. I'm just wanted to show you a live 
experiment because sometimes you know when you see these huh, in the laboratory so to speak you know, everything goes great because everything was planned in advance you know it's designed to go great here I am doing things that I have not tried with these yet because I need to know will this can I do what I normally do with these paints and well if I can't oh yeah ooh, this is nice a little touch of that black in there really makes a nifty shade now they're gonna be making more colors I am completely fine with just the ones they got because you know me I don't use tons and tons of colors uh, they may be coming out with inks and I beg them to also work on a fluorescent paint too because well I love my fluorescent paints and I'm just gonna use my finger in there take some of that away so we've definitely changed the tune of this a little bit I do like the way the face is a different grayer darker color than his buddy so we're gonna leave it that way I'm just gonna wow <laughs> this stuff is uh, that is really some intense yeah look at that that really gets in there so that's cool yeah lots of lots of nifty things here so let's lighten this up we've got ourselves a grayish color here and that's gonna go over the hooves and all I did was I took that but remained of the black color a little bit of the that light warm gray they tried to be a little more basic in their names they didn't wanna they didn't want to go painterly on you like with yellow ochre or lizard and crimson that sort of thing but they also didn't want to go white scars white and whatever purple and all that kind of stuff they wanted to keep things relatively sane so yeah, I'm mixing that in with some of the orange there and now you'll see that some of these colors will maybe match the first color test figure there that was done yeah so that's nice and well I'm gonna be doing the I'll be posting the next army painter video before Thanksgiving I think the dark sword ones that I'm working on those are gonna come out afterwards but since this one is it's kinda of for everybody here now, I know not everybody does the Thanksgiving thing and if you're in Canada your Thanksgiving was already weeks ago Uh, it's just a, a quick shout out, a quick thanks to everyone that supports the Patreon thing. It is, it's appreciated. I, like I've told some of the folks in the other videos, I've gotten, it's not a super expensive camera or anything like that, but I got another camera for filming battle reports, terrain videos, and, well, bigger things. I don't know like this so hopefully that helps I'm gonna definitely need yeah, there's gonna be some other equipment that I need though so more camera mounts I potentially need a another machine to be able to do some of these things this is not it's it's a time-consuming not inexpensive process that's for sure So any support is definitely appreciated. 
and like I said now since I got everybody here that can see this there were some folks that I don't know what it was maybe they were ignoring their emails or maybe it was marked as spam or whatever but all of the links in the videos or for the videos they come via your patreon email that's the safest and easiest way because there's a lot of people to deal with and that is just it's the best way for me to do it for a lot of different reasons and if folks don't check out their patreon email or whatever the email address that's attached to that then they don't see the links and we'll use what's left of this here again going in with more of a highlight presence there so I'm gonna see if I can mess around with the eyes here so I think yeah the eyes had some some yellow in them there so this is one of the last things I'll do here let's find ourselves yeah you know, this is the one yellow that's in it so let's go golden yellow and put this out there and oh let's see this is another interesting one here this is a bright ivory I think you've heard me talk about my off-white colors this is like one of those off-whites and yeah, we're gonna put a little of that in with some of the yellow I'm gonna touch of orange in here too this will be for the eyes here, which good. And I want to get a little bit of the yellow into some of these elements too. There we go, one eye. Let's get the second one in here. Now more towards orange. It's effectively a little bit of shading on the eye there. And you can see now that we're starting to add a little more light to the tusks and teeth, they start to stand out a bit. So I think we'll just, this last part of it here, we'll just focus in on the face. Oh. As it is, obviously, it's always the most important part of any figure. Because you're, you're always trying to frame the face. So I'm trying to use the hair here to frame the face. I'm trying to point you in to this area here, direct you into that almost by see these lines and the horns are almost pointing your eyes into that direction like come on around here and check out this face like so now I mean look at this we see there is definitely some some greens in there I and mean, we can make a green Let's see if we can find a green here in the rain. I think there is a there's a few of them here. So let's let's just grab this. What do we got here? So it's jade. It's kind of a turquoise. This one has not been opened yet. So I'm going to take off the little protective label thing here, and we'll just throw a, a little bit out on the palette here. And you'll probably want to give things a good shake because they're going to be new. Yeah, that's a that is nice and bright. I'm gonna go back to some of the black here, just a touch of that. Gonna need it for some other things too. So now we've got kind of a greenish gray here. See we've got that nifty red there around the eye. We don't want to spoil that. 
this is going to go around that. So see how I'm putting this in some of the crevices here? Just a touch of that. It just it makes the face have a little more interest in it than just, okay, various shades of tans and umbers. Just gives you a little something more to look at there. And now we got to really set these eyes in here. Sorry, it's upside down. But it's got to be where I can get to it. Same thing here. And now I'm putting in the irises here. And I want some of this fur to be a little darker. So yeah, there's a lot of definitely some nifty, nifty colors. Looks like some of the orange is still okay, and I got some red here, so... On the eyes. It's, it's effectively a little bit of shading there. That's good. And I always, I like to have all the different colors out on the palette. What do we got over here? And just gonna, let's create a little bit of contrast between that darker hair and the skin. Now this color does, it's not, so the clear paints that you see me using all the time, those you can paint transparently and opaque at the same time. I know that sounds weird, but these paints, they cover pretty well. So you have to keep that in mind as you're working with them that you, know, you get used to what the clear paints do well these are a little different I mean, all paints are you know, you, it just happens to be that the secret weapon and reaper paints tend to really match up together they're really similar in a lot of ways so here's some darker tones here again around the face just establish a little separation. And it's done in, in, in as glazing a fashion as possible. More translucent there. So we're basically darkening up his beard. Not sure if you can see that. Looks like you can. And same thing over on this side of the face especially, which is a little bit lighter than the other side. And of course your nostrils here. Let's get these. And we need some, just some straight gray here in some places. So I just took my, that off-white and mixed it with that black, made a gray. Yeah, really, at this point, I almost need to stick him on his base so that I don't have to keep handling him. So again, this is just a little preview, 
of how those paints work. I thought it could be fun for you. Here, let's uh, try that purple. Where the heck did that purple color go? Here it is. So, I'm going to pull that off like I said before. Got to remember to shake it up, though. You can probably hear that. So a little bit out here. And yeah, this is uh, like a Reaper color that I've used a bunch of times here. Let's see if I've got it. Yeah. Oh, I see I've got these turned around a little bit. So it's one a little bit like this guy right here. What is that, Twilight Purple? It's similar to that. Well, that's interesting. Well, that's kind of nice. Mixed it with the orange. Yeah, oh well, yeah, that's nice. So I'm just doing that around uh, the lips here. A few places here on the face. A few places here on the skin. Yeah, just trying to make sure there's some variation here. So see on the top side of the snout, it's almost more that purple slash pink color. Let's get a little white into that, or the off-white, I should say. There we go. Like that. Here we are. And what the heck? I'm going to try some over here. This is that jade, a little bit of black, some of the white. And see, I'm going to hit some of the fur with it. Not a ton, but just a little bit. So this, again, this is pretty stout stuff right here. So when you use it, it's going to cover. You just have to know that kind of going in. I think it can, wow, a little tiny bit. Just the smallest amount on your brush is really going to cover. That's, that's pretty amazing. So, we're going to throw a little green in some of these shadow areas here. I like that. Just, again, we're trying to play opposites here. I think where these colors are really going to get a nifty, very nice debut and, and full effect is on some of the creature caster figures because we have several of those in the works. There's his, there's your face there. So certainly can't wait to try it on. Oh, I don't know things like this lady right here, nifty creature caster figure. So I've been essentially saving these. I knew the paint line was coming out. It was something that couldn't be discussed in advance. So I just kind of hung on to those until until the time was right. And well, now with the colors out, that time is now. Let's see, I can throw a little more. Look at that, just a tiny bit goes. Look at that does. And it that's essentially covering over black with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Yeah, so it's definitely it can it can cover anything you want. Yeah, wow. So 
I'll hit that color that we mixed over here. I think it's one step later now. Get this where you can see it. Nifty. Yeah, I'll get this. I think we can go one stage later. I'm just going to try and get the eyelids here. So I'll get you when I do the more official videos with this stuff. I'll try and get you some more info on that. Ooh, that's a nice green right there. That means we mixed a neat green. we got to find a place to put it. Let's go here. So that was again the ivory color, some of the green, some of the yellow. And I, you know, I love to mix paints. So if you're offering me a line of paint that mixes very nicely, like that, oh, yeah, and it dries. This is the other thing, too, we're finding out is dries nice and wow it dries nice and matte oh my goodness yeah that was something I didn't really know yet because I hadn't really seen the stuff dry so clearly you get a nice matte finish out of it yeah let's uh... Oh, is there enough ivory color left in there and as usual this even this is not white it seems white but it's not so you can certainly do I can do all the things I can do all the things that makes me happy yeah we've got his buddy over here. Arr, arr. Yeah. And we've got a base for him to sit on somewhere. It's a big old giant base. Here it is. And somewhere I've got holes drilled in it. I think you go with something like this. So I'll finish him off again. Do the last bits on him. Get that base ready. And I'll edit this up, render it, and have it so you guys can check it out. But thanks for watching, and welcome to the intro to the new Creature Caster Paints.